Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So before we get started, just wanted to appreciate, I don't know if you can see, but like, just perfect. This top is just very appropriate. Um, anyway, today's video is about the B mat. I thought I'd do a similar video to the UCAT one that I did. Um, link in info cards. Um, so I asked you guys on Instagram for questions about B mat, and I'm going to answer the most common ones in this video um, and hopefully try and give you the best advice that I can. So this video I'm going to try and make it like as concise as possible, um, just get to the point, make it as informative as I possibly can to help you out. Um, so before we actually get started I just wanted to mention that this video is very very kindly sponsored by Kaplan Test Prep. Um, I'll talk about them more further on in the video but yeah, just wanted to say thank you very much for sponsoring this video. And without further ado, let's hop right into it. We've got a lot to get through. So I separated out all the questions that I got into like topics um, to make this video flow a little bit better. So starting off with like a general introduction, like a get to know me. Um, when did you take the BMAT is the first question. So I took it in November 2017. Um, that was the first year I think that they brought in a September one, but I still did the November option. Um, that was a long time ago actually. What score did you get? So I got 5.4 in section 1, 5.9 in section 2, and a 3A in the essay. So honestly, like, not amazing scores, but I got to where I want to go, so I guess it was okay. Um, which unis did you apply to? So the only BMAT uni I applied to was Cambridge. Um, and as you probably know, somehow I managed to get in. Um, the other unis I applied to were Cardiff, Exeter and Edinburgh, but they all take the UCAT. The next group of questions are queries about scores. So the first one is, what score does Cambridge want for its medicine applicants to get? Honestly, there isn't a clear answer. Um, I thought when I saw my scores that there was no way I could get an interview because I read somewhere online that I think the London unis take like only sixes and above like consider them for interviews but I actually ended up getting an offer let alone an interview so it honestly isn't clear and in my college there were quite a few of us that really didn't get amazing BMAT scores like they were very very average and I think especially at Cambridge because it's considered like holistically your whole application it really doesn't matter too much if your score isn't like amazing. As for other colleges, they may have been more strict with like BMAT requirements. I don't really know. I have a feeling that they were, but you can probably search up online like college requirements or um, uni requirements for BMAT. What would be classified as a good score? So initially when I was going into the BMAT, I wanted to get sixes and above because this is what I had read was like the baseline of like above this is considered a good score. Looking back I'm not sure whether that's quite true because I still got into Cambridge with my scores. There isn't a cutoff point where like this is a good score and this isn't. Um, I'd say you probably do need to get like above four-ish just because below that is like edging into the below average but again like you never know and as for good score I think it's really like whatever you're aiming for and like the goal that you set yourself individually that you want to get is what you should consider as a good score. Don't compare yourself to other people, don't stress yourself out and set ridiculously unrealistic expectations for yourself. Next section is about like my own personal experience of the BMAT and stuff that I did, stuff like that. Um, so firstly, when did you start revising for the BMAT slash how long did you prepare? There were quite a few questions about this. So I had planned to start right after I sent off my UCAS, which was like mid-September, which would have given me like a month and a half. I started doing little bits here and there at that point, but I left like my proper revision till way too late. I went about it the completely wrong way, like I didn't have a plan of action, I never like scheduled in a specific thing that I was going to do on a given day like I would with my revision or my homework. 
I just kind of went along with it, which was a bad idea. Like I should have sat down, planned out my week and said, okay, so Tuesday I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna do this many practice questions from like section one. How many hours a day did you do? And honestly, like I can't remember, it was so long ago. I don't think number one, you should judge the value of your revision by how many hours you do. I think you should judge it by how much you get through and whether that keeps you on track, like with how you've planned out your revision and like how much you wanna get covered before the exam. Just make sure that you don't overwork yourself. This is the thing, like I didn't do enough, but I don't think you should go the complete other side of the spectrum and do way too much because this time is already stressful with like UCAS interviews and schoolwork on top of that. You know, we've talked a lot about burnout on this channel. What was the hardest section slash part of the BMAT? So I think for me, section one, um, because I remember in the exam, it was the worst. Like it was by far the worst. I was sat in the exam and I was literally thinking like, this cannot be happening when I couldn't answer question after question after question. Like they made it so hard in our year. Um, but in the practice even, it wasn't going like amazingly. It was really temperamental. Like sometimes the papers would go really well and then other times it would literally be a disaster. The next question is, was it harder than the UCAT? And I think with like retrospect, I would say yes. I definitely found it worse. The UCAT, the main problem was the time pressure, but the questions themselves were like generally on the whole answerable. Whereas for the BMAT, I just found, especially in section one, there were some questions I literally had zero clue how to do. It's just a lot harder to prepare for in my opinion, because the questions can be so much more random um, and literally about anything. Whereas for the UCAT, if I remember correctly, there were like general styles of questions that would come up again and again and like it was much easier to spot patterns in the question types. The next question is how did you manage revising for the BMAT, UCAT and A-levels? Um, I made sure, like I chose to do my UCAT in August before year 13 started so that it would be just completely out of the way and I could just do it over summer. Um, and subsequently I chose to do my BMAT in November rather than the new September date because Number one, I wanted to give myself more time for revision. I thought I was gonna do more revision, <laughs> oops. Um, and number two, I wanted to give myself a break after the UCAT before school started where I like didn't have to do anything. During term time itself, like whilst all the uni applications were going on and all like the BMAT interview, that kind of stuff, for my actual A-levels, I really didn't do that much. Like I just did the homework and revised for like end of topic tests when we had them. The last question in this section is probably my favourite of all the questions, which is what didn't you do for the BMAT that you wish you did? And this is like plain and simple. I should have done way more revision. Like I left my revision way too late. I should have just done way more practice. I should have done more past papers. I should have done more past papers timed because in the actual exam I was running out of time very badly. I should have used more resources that were available to me or like more of the resources that I had. I should have actually written out full essays like even if it was just a few because I went into the exam and I hadn't actually written a VMAT essay before in full. The next section of this video is questions about resources. So first question is, are there any courses or online resources that you would recommend? And this is where Catplan comes in. So they have an online question bank with over 600 practice questions um, and there are in-depth explanations as to like why you got the answer wrong if you got it wrong and like how to go about answering the questions and the thought processes that you should use to answer them so that you can apply them to like questions that you do in the future and to the questions that you do in the exam. You can use this question bank alongside the BMAT past papers to, you know, develop your technique in answering these questions for the BMAT and to just get even more practice in because I honestly think that practice is just the way that you're going to improve your scores. The amazing thing about this platform is that through accessing the question bank, you actually get a review of up to two BMAT essays that you write for section three, um, which I think is great because marking multiple choice questions 
it's like right or wrong you can do that by yourself but you can't really mark an essay that you wrote yourself and people like your teachers who aren't familiar with the BMAT aren't gonna mark it in the same way that it will be marked by a BMAT examiner like they're not gonna judge it in the same way and through getting your essays marked you can get feedback on like your writing style the content that you're putting into your essays and like how it can be improved um, and you also actually get access to the Future Doctors channel on the Kaplan Test Prep site which gives you personalised guidance through like your med school application journey um, and I think it's great that this is all like included in this like one package so overall the Kaplan question bank is really like a great all-round resource for the BMAT, it can also be used alongside their genetics and physics workshops as well, which are also useful for the BMAT, honestly, like, it's great. Um, I will leave a link to it in the description box if you want to check it out, if you're interested, go click the link. Next question is, did you do any courses? Um, and personally, no I didn't. I can't justify spending that amount of money on a course um, especially because like you can prepare for the BMAT by yourself you can get your own resources obviously the courses themselves I've never been on one so I can't say but I take it for the price like they will probably prepare you quite well um, so if you want someone else to like guide you through the BMAT prep then go for it and the final section and everyone's favorite um, advice so first question, I have really struggled with section one. Um, I don't think you can even fully prepare for it. Help. I feel you. Make sure that you do plenty of past papers because it is like a practice kind of section. Like that's what you need is like practice familiarity with the question types and stuff like that. And do practice questions on top of that and just try and like look for patterns in the questions. The past papers definitely give you a good feel for what the exam is gonna be like. Although mine was seemingly a lot harder. It's so hard to feel prepared for because there's always like another question you can do. There's always something that you come across that stumps you. And it's, it is hard, but you've just got to trust that you've done enough and that you're gonna be okay. How did you prepare for the essays? Because the questions are very specific. So in all honesty, as I've already mentioned, I didn't do very much in preparation for the essays. I kind of just left them to the side, but I did read through a book. Um, I think it was called like BMAT Work Solutions, which had loads of like essay plans for all the past paper essay questions. Um, and I try to kind of memorize them um, more so to be honest like look at the thought processes of, but, but what the thought processes behind like how to answer the questions like how to approach the questions and what kind of things they were looking for for their answers but I definitely think I should have done like my own essay plans it's better when you develop the thought processes yourself probably and you think about how to answer the question. I think whatever you do, make sure that you write something about each bullet point in the essay. I, when I did it, we got like three bullet points on like, I guess subheadings for the essay, like you had to write something about each one. And I think that's like the baseline criteria probably for getting a three, unless you write like utter rubbish. So the next question is, how did you prepare for each section? And since I've already talked about one and three, the only one that's left, is two um, and for this one it's science you actually do need to kind of revise it's pretty much like GCSE level um, biology chemistry maths and physics just make sure that you do brush up on subjects that you're not taking at A level because you probably have forgotten like a lot and if you do get the chance go through the syllabuses of like the other um, subjects as well from GCSE just to make sure that like you're familiar with everything because some of the topics just aren't covered at A level um, and also do obviously practice questions on top of that as well. They actually have a specification out for the BMAT, I searched it up, you can just find it online for section 2 and like everything that you need to actually know so you can go through that. I think that's probably a better idea than going through GCSE syllabuses. I wanted to finish this video off by talking about this question which is what to do during the actual exam 
first of all, please, whatever you do, don't stress yourself out because this is what I did and I'm here to tell you to learn from my mistakes. So I went into that exam and I was honestly terrified. Like I knew I hadn't really done as much as I wanted to. And it was just like the environment, like sitting in that test room and having to sit the paper. And I spent a lot of like section one having a mini freak out. Um, so just try and calm yourself down. Try and not like stress yourself out unnecessarily. It's not gonna help you in the exam. I know it's easier said than done, but do whatever you can before the exam to just calm yourself down, remember like it's not the end of the world and try not to think about how important the test actually is to you and just go in and just sit it as if it were any other exam. Remember that you can only really do your best on the day, especially between sections. Please try not to think about the previous section. Um, just try and forget about it because if you're in section two thinking about how badly section one went, you're going to mess up section two because you're not actually concentrating on it. It's more worth just trying to get a clean slate and be like, okay, section one might not have been the best, but section two, like, I'm really going to give it my best shot. Classic test taking technique, but don't spend too long on any given question. I think especially in section one, this is very easy to do. Um, to be fair, in section two as well. If you're struggling with section one questions, when you go back to them at the end, um, try and approach them in a different way don't just check for errors in the method that you did before because you're more likely to get to the right answer if you just start from scratch and try and rework it out in section two it's really important to like try and keep up and keep on top of the time because it's very easy to fall behind and it's very hard to then catch up make sure that you leave yourself enough time to like put in the answers so I know some people just go through, circle the answers on the question sheet and then put them all into the answer sheet at the end. Um, I would say it's probably a good idea to do it as you go along. Just, yeah, remember that there's actually an answer sheet that you actually need to fill in. Finally, for section three, just remember that like you get one sheet of A4 and it's not even actually A4 and you don't get any more. So make sure that you use the space wisely. Write a decent essay plan, like spend... 10 out of the 30 minutes or even more writing a good essay plan and know exactly what you're going to write the order that you're going to write in try and formulate some sentences in your head of like what you want to write just so that there's not like loads of scribbling out and like arrows everywhere because it's just going to be a mess and you're going to waste space and i think that's pretty much it for this video so I really, really hope that you found this helpful. Thank you again to Kaplan for sponsoring this video. I, as I said, will leave the link to the question bank in the description box so you can just go click that if you're interested and check their question bank out. And finally, just good luck if you're taking the BMAT. Um, I hope everything goes well for you. Thank you very much for watching. If you did like this video, do give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, who might benefit from it, um, subscribe to my channel for more like medicine content and I will see you in my next video. Bye!